Hi everyone, welcome to this channel. Learn Chinese with Moo. 和牛牛一起学中文 In this video, I'm going to talk about history of Chinese characters. And this is the part one video. I will release the second part of the video shortly. And the reason that I want to make this video is because recently I've been pre preparing my students for AP Chinese exam, and I know the history of Chinese characters are really difficult. So I try to summarize some of the important words and make this video. Hope it will help you to prepare your test better. And now let's begin. The first words, Chinese characters, 中国文字中国文字 History, 历史历史 So when people ask you about the history of Chinese characters, you can just use these two words, 中国文字的历史 Let's say it again. 中国文字的历史 That means the history of Chinese characters. And now let's see the sentence. So here is the history of Chinese characters. I try to summarize, so I might skip a lot of details. But if you can memorize this sentence, it will be really good for you, especially when you are preparing for the. Cultural presentation. This sentence will surely help. So now this sentence means the history of Chinese characters are from picture words to words on metals to kai style and tao style in calligraphy. I know it's a very very long sentence, even even in English. So now let's read this. Okay, just try to remember everything in here, and then I will explain it to you. In this video and also in the following video, so now let's begin. Chinese characters' history is from calligraphy, calligraphy, to calligraphy and calligraphy. Let's read this again. Chinese characters' history is from calligraphy, calligraphy. 到书法的楷书和草书。So just try to remember this, and I will talk about 甲骨文 and 金文 in this video. And the rest of the thing I will talk about it in the second video. And now let's continue. So here, picture characters, 甲骨文。甲骨文 So basically, 甲骨文 is the words that people saw, like the real item, and they just draw it on something. So it's a little bit like this. So that is the most ancient characters. So let's read this again. 甲骨文甲骨文 Cough words. 刻字刻字 Turtle shell, 龟甲龟甲 Animal bones, 兽骨兽骨 So if you want to say this sentence, Chinese people carve words on turtle shells and animal bones. There are so many new words here, so let's do it one by one. First, how to say Chinese people? 中国人中国人 And then how to say carve words? 刻字，刻字 ，and how to say turtle shells? 龟甲，龟甲 ，and how to say animal bones? 兽骨，兽骨。So you combine these four elements to say this sentence. Chinese people carve words on the turtle shells and animal bones. 中国人刻字在龟甲和兽骨上。中国人刻字在龟甲和兽骨上。Now I want you to say this sentence by yourself.
And now here is another sentence. These words are called picture words or picture characters. First, I want to ask you how to say these words. 这些字，这些字 ，and then how to say picture words or picture characters. 甲骨文，甲骨文。So now let's say this sentence. These words are called picture characters. 这些字叫做甲骨文。这些字。叫做甲骨文。Now it's your turn to say this sentence. 这些字叫做甲骨文。Now it's the second Chinese characters that's been discovered, and this word is called words on a metal. So here you can see the image. Here is 甲骨文 and this one is this one. That we are going to learn is called Jing Wen. Jing Wen, as you can see, the words are transformed. So that's why this one is the second words that been discovered. So let's read this again. Jing Wen, Jing Wen. Metals, Jin Shu, Jin Shu. So here we are going to say another sentence. Chinese people. Cup words on metals. First, I want to ask you how to say Chinese people. Chinese people, Chinese people, and then how to say cup words. Kzi, Kzi, and then how to say metals. Metal, metal. So let's put these three elements together to say this sentence. Chinese people, cup words on metals. 中国人刻字在金属上。中国人刻字在金属上。Now it's your turn to say this sentence. 中国人刻字在金属上。Here is another sentence. These words are called words on metals. So first, I want to ask you how to say these words. 这些字，这些字 ，and then how to say words on metals. 金文，金文。So now we are going to say this sentence. These words are called words on metals. 这些字叫做金文，这些字叫做金文。So here is the second one. This one is Jing Wen, and then it becomes the words that we are using now. So as you can see, this is the history of Chinese characters. First, it looked like the the shape of this item, and then it transformed to make it a little bit more like the characters that we are using now. And this is the word that we are using. So I just want to show you this、uh, image so you will know. The history of the Chinese characters, and now we are going to see a famous people. This person is called Meng Tian. Meng Tian invent, 发明发明 paintbrush, 毛笔毛笔 And now let's see the sentence. Yes, this person invent the paintbrush. So Meng Tian invented. Pen brush. Then how to say Meng Tian? Is Meng Tian is the same. And then how to say invent? 发明发明 And then how to say pen brushes? 毛笔毛笔 So now I want you to say this sentence. Meng Tian invented pen brushes. Meng Tian 发明毛笔 Meng Tian. 发明毛笔。Now it's your turn to say this sentence. Meng Tian 发明毛笔。And here is another word: four treasures in the study room. So here, study room means 文房，文房 Here is the study room. 四宝 means the four treasures. 
So which are the four treasures? You can see this image, the pen brush, the ink stone, and then the paper, and also the ink in here. That's the four treasures in the study room. Let's read this again. 文房四宝文房四宝 So if you want to say this sentence, pen brush is one of the four treasures in the study room. First, I want to ask you how to say pen brush. 毛笔, 毛笔, and then how to say four treasures in the study room. 文房四宝, 文房四宝, and then how to say one of the. 之一, 之一, so let's say this sentence. Pen brush is one of the four treasures in the study room. 毛笔是文房四宝之一. 毛笔是文房四宝之一. Now it's your turn to say this sentence. 毛笔是文房四宝之一. Writing. 写字, 写字. Tools. 工具, 工具. So if you want to say this sentence, pen brush is the writing tool. First, I want to ask you how to say pen brush. 毛笔, 毛笔. And then how to say writing. 写字写字 And then how to say tool 工具, 工具. So let's put everything together to say this sentence. Pen brush is the writing tool. 毛笔是写字的工具 毛笔是写字的工具 Now it's your turn to say this sentence. 毛笔是写字的工具 So there are so many words in here and I also write a lot of sentences for you to remember. So if you are preparing for the AP Chinese exam, I would suggest you to memorize all these words and then also memorize the sentences. So when you are asked to talk about the history of Chinese characters, at least you have something in your brain that you can use. So I hope you find this video very useful to you. Please subscribe my channel and like my video and also wait for my second part of the video to talk about Chinese characters. Bye-bye.